Born a long time ago on the planet Spandex, Venom was a misunderstood skin-tight unitard that longed more than anything to be worn by the greatest of Earth's mighty heroes. Shunned by society for hugging the crotch a little too tight, his mind was warped into a bloodthirsty killer after being used as David Bowie's codpiece in the movie Labyrinth. <laughs> That's some serious bullshit. However, symbiotes are kind of like a race of living superhero spandex creatures, if you think about it. Seriously though, Venom's story is a bit tragic and entirely awesome. The initial idea for Spidey's sweet ass black suit was conceived by a regular old comic book fan named Randy Schuler back in 1982, which he sold to Marvel for a measly 220 bucks. Writer Tom DeFalco and artist Ron Friends then brought the suit to life by making it a living sentient being and introduced it in 1984's The Amazing Spider-Man number 252. So there's a little real world history, now let's bust into some full on character bio. The symbiote known as Venom was hatched from a wee egg on the artificial planet Clintar. He was immediately thrown to the curb by the other symbiotes because he wanted to bond with his host and protect them unlike the others. They only wanted to munch on their host's adrenaline until the host keeled over and then move on to the next unlucky son of a bitch. So, the sad little symbiote was left all alone to fend for himself with no little symbiote friends. One day, an alien from another planet called a Kree came from outer space and took him, thinking he was mentally defective due to his isolation from the others. They experimented on his poor little ass and immediately made him a weapon by bonding him to the Kree warrior, Tel Kar. Kar then used the poor young symbiote to spy on and assassinate Kree enemies in the Kree Scroll War. In a terrible twist of fate, the symbiote was separated from Tel Kar and stranded on a remote icy planet. There, he bonded with another warrior he mistakenly thought to be a hero. However, the dude turned out to be an evil-ass bastard who used the symbiote to commit mass genocide and slaughter on a planet-wide scale. This totally jacked the symbiote up indefinitely with a bloodthirsty crack-like addiction to killing some mugs. Eventually, he was captured by his fellow symbiotes and locked away on a remote planet called Battleworld. Not because of the genocide and slaughter and all, but so that he didn't contaminate the symbiote jizz pool with the mental deficiency of wanting to permanently bond with a host. Skip forward to Secret Wars number 8, and our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man accidentally finds his ass while looking for a new suit to replace his ripped up one. Immediately upon contact, the symbiote latches onto him and takes on the form of what Peter was thinking about at that very moment, which was, Bro! That Spider-Woman suit is sexy as hell! Spidey wigs out, but is like, Damn, son! I look fly as f Plus, he has extra strength and stamina, the suit produces its own webbing, and turns into pimp-ass street clothes when he's on Parker time. Spider-Man takes the suit home, where he uses it as his main suit from then on. The symbiote believes it has found its true soulmate in Peter Parker and learns a wide range of human emotions from him that he had never experienced before, such as love, grief, hate, sadness, and guilt. He also begins to increase dramatically in intelligence. Above all else, the symbiote thinks it's beyond super amazeballs to be a hero and save lives. He loves being a superhero so much that he begins to take over Spider-Man's body while he is sleeping to continue to fight crime, completely unawares of the physical damage that he's doing to Peter. So, Spidey rolls over to Mr. Fantastic's crib and is like, Bro, I'm getting lots of sleep but I'm tired as hell. Do I have mono or some shit? And Mr. Fantastic is like, Maybe it's your fly-ass new unitard that you got from that alien planet. Can I analyze it? And Spidey's like, Go for it, home skillet. So after some quick tests, Mr. Fantastic is like, Dude, that shit is alive. And not only that, it has a mind of its own and it wants to become part of you. Like, forever, man. So of course, Parker says, Fuck that. Get this fucking shit off me, man. After some tests, Mr. Fantastic learns that the symbiote is vulnerable to specific sound frequencies and fire, which he uses to remove it from Spider-Man. They contain it and Spidey takes off. However, the symbiote escapes and returns to Parker's house disguised as a blue and red Spidey suit. And when Peter puts it on, it forcibly tries to permanently bond with him. 
Peter then finds himself in a church bell tower where the sound of the bells combined with Peter's immense rejection of it causes the symbiote to separate from him and begin to die. But before it dies, it pulls its homeboy Peter to safety and then seeps down a crack in the floor, presumably dead. All right, guys, that's going to do it for another episode of Fun Fact Friday. And as always, if you really like this episode, then please show us some love by hitting that there like button. And if you really enjoy our content here on Miscast Entertainment, then smash that subscribe button and ring the bell next to it so you get notified of all future content. And the most important thing is to head on over to miscastentertainment.com and check out our merch section. Not only do we put a whole bunch of cool articles on that website, but we also have some really super sweet merch. All right, guys, I'm William Davis Moore, and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.